What's going on? Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. We, we just getting caught up in that in that intro still. Man, we, it, it, it just, Every time I watch it, I'm it's just different, like, right? You know, it's like it's, it's, I'm just ready to go in today, man. We got a lot to get into. We got the big homie back with us. Big Gene gonna be joining us a little bit uh, later on. But uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in football this week that we got to oh, talk yeah. t- talk about really quick. But before we do, let me introduce my co-host for tonight. Hey. Emma Marie, what's going on? Good, guys. I'm chilling. I had a great day, you know, running around. Mm-hmm. So happy to be back with you guys. Yes, so happy yes, that yes. you are joining us. Yes, mm-hmm. thank you for join- letting me join your team. You know, um, it's super, super cold mm-hmm. outside. It got is. had to pull out the furries, you know, the big jackets yep. to stay warm. It de- it de- definitely <laughs> is. I had my big black jacket on today and, and, mm-hmm. and Michael's uh, Chewbacca looking jacket on last night. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> yeah, was, was, was out there last night getting it in. Uh, it's definitely you've been having some fun lately. Yeah, I mean, so a, a guys, like I'll I'll tell get you guys a little summary real quick. So, <laughs> um, good friend of of mine, Michael Blackson, was out here in the Bronx. Um, he sold out three shows. I saw the con Fuego, Fuego, I think it's called, mm-hmm. in cool. the Bronx. Um, so I went to two of the shows last night, and so it was packed house, super lit. Um, you know, you, we went to his last shows a few months ago in August, I believe. So mm-hmm. it was a good time. Uh, good time. Definitely, definitely. And uh, we got a lot of sports to get into uh, today. And, of course, like mm-hmm. I said, Big Gene is in the building. We actually going to talk about the, the seven degrees of separation when we bring uh, Big Gene out. Because he, he's actually connected to Emerald. Yeah. <laughs> you know. How? What's the connection? Well, We're we going we, we we to get into when he gets oh, on. Right, but, right, I, right. yeah, <laughs> I had to go make some calls before the show, like, yeah. figure out who knows who. And apparently he's, like, family to my family. So mm-hmm. that's dope. I'm, I'm excited to meet him because I've heard so much about him mm-hmm. so, that's, a, that's a fact yeah. and uh but before we bring bring big gene out really quick uh we gotta we gotta run through this uh monday night football game really quick uh the seahawks ended the 49ers undefeated streak yes. oh my god uh, what a game russell wilson mvp performance leading them uh the goats. down the field in uh in, in overtime to get with the seconds left to uh, put them in position to win the game by a field goal and uh Sierra, you uh, you put out a, a blog. Yeah, this, uh, past you know, week about, I uh, literally uh, called it from the jump. I said that Russell Wilson was going to beat the 49ers and their undefeated season. And what did they do? They ended up beating them. It was oh, wow, just, you called that. I mm-hmm. did call it. I said. That's but tell, but hold on, but you got to tell them why <laughs> you said all this. Was oh, yeah. Down. I said it was all because of his wife and his new family, Sierra. Listen, thank you. <laughs> Listen, that's he so is crazy. He's a changed man. Because I didn't know that's that's your reasoning, mm-hmm. and you know what I wrote <laughs> <laughs> on the blogs this week on Real Fans Real Talk. I said Russell Wilson had leveled up. Okay, um, leveled up, leveled up, leveled. Listen, up. Listen, I ain't, I ain't gonna hold you. Up. Listen, All right. good woman to do that too. You, you got a good woman you. by your side. You love the Lord, and you out here being faithful. Mm-hmm. You see what he does on that field. Listen, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know so shout out to you know sierra His, their whole family is beautiful yeah and, for real um, when you really have that good support though i think that definitely correlates to what you know when you put your heart on that field and he really gave that game his all he um was quoted after the game saying that was one of the most craziest games he's been a part of mm-hmm. and so that was intense and well deserved Definitely well deserved. It. Uh, all his plays were sensational. You know, he was able to get out of the pocket. He was able to strike and see, lay out the field, and find the players. You know, and they went into overtime. Like that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And then to take over the game <laughs> in overtime, mm-hmm. and uh, and get the get the W, man. That's an amazing. Shout out to uh, Russell uh, Wilson. He's definitely leading uh, the, the the way right now in the MVP race. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Uh, one thing that he is a part of, and actually, and I want to talk about this this week, because uh, the quarterback position is interesting. Since uh, you know, for a long time, it was a position that that black people couldn't play because they, yep. they said that we didn't have the level of intelligence to mm-hmm. play quarterback. They underestimated us. For yeah. yeah. So you know, interesting stat that uh, ESPN uh, brought out in the 2011 called QBR, mm-hmm. which it basically sums up the impact that the quarterback has on the game. Yeah. Um, as far as it, it combines a lot of stats with passing. Uh, how to affect the rushing, all, all different types of things. But uh, right now, um, and I don't know if this has happened before, 
I, I gotta I gotta go back and check. But right now in the NFL, the top five quarterbacks in a QBR ranking are all black quarterbacks. Yep. Uh, Dak Prescott is number one. Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson is number two. Lamar Jackson is number three. Uh, Deshaun Watson is four, and I believe Patrick Mahomes is five, and uh, QBR rating right now. So it, it's kind of crazy <laughs> how the uh, you know the black quarterbacks then they done made it come up. They're taking over the league now. And it's it's you know unfortunately you know I always compare uh, or I speak about the NFL's racial divide, right? How all the players are predominantly black and all the owners are white, and this structure that is almost similar to like that slave mentality of black men keeping them, you know, physically strong but mentally weak. And uh -huh. I think it speaks volumes to have a black quarterback really changing the game and proving that that stereotype is incorrect. Yeah. yeah, and like to have all of the top five all African American is just sensational, you know. Not even Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers are on that list. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're not even in the, in the top ten right not now. Not even the top ten. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. And, 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 and Tom Brady is the GOAT. He, he actually... He has the record for highest QBR all time uh, from that 2007 uh, season when him and Randy Moss broke yeah, like that. Yeah, but not right record. now. Oh, yeah, no, but right now, right now, <laughs> yeah, right yeah. now the brothers it's is, is, is right 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 now. Yeah. Yeah, you got to love it, man. What's yeah. going on right now? <laughs> and we talk about, you know, re um, representation so much in every different field. So for young black men at our home looking at this and thinking that maybe they, they're not capable of being a quarterback, like, mm -hmm. we are killing the game right now. So... Mm -hmm. You can do it, 100%. Yeah. And you might mess around and get you a wife like Ciara. Listen, <laughs> yeah. up here leveling it up, like, yeah. 100%. Yep, yeah, that's, that's a fact. Um, Lamar Jackson is actually interesting because they were actually trying to get him to, to uh, transition over to playing wide receiver. Mm -hmm. And his mom actually, you know, made sure that that didn't happen. And he's continued playing quarterback. And, uh, you know, as you guys can see, it's working out really well uh, for the Ravens right now. Uh, yeah. they, they're first place in the division. You know, they ended the Patriots' undefeated streak uh, two weeks ago, and they're looking uh, really dominant, and it's because of the the play of Lamar Jackson, and not yeah. just with his legs, which people know him for, but he's passing the football at a, a very high rate mm -hmm. this season. Uh, he's actually going to be facing off against another quarterback in the top five this weekend, Deshaun Watson, when the Ravens uh, play the Texans. Mm -hmm. um, I'm taking the Ravens, you know, obviously for <laughs> personal reasons, Ravens fan, but uh, who y'all taking in, in that game? I'm going to go for the Ravens, Lamar Jackson. All right, that's, you know. First of all, you already know how I feel about Baltimore. <laughs> so, Boston University uh, alumni, Baltimore is my second home, so Ravens okay. all day. <laughs> all right, well, Baltimore run, runs the, the uh, table on that one. Yeah. Um, uh, there, there is somebody who may be coming back to football that hasn't been in the game in a couple of years now. Uh, just about three years, Colin Kaepernick is yeah. going to get a uh, tryout this Saturday. Uh, it's about 13 teams yeah. so far that are on the list that are supposed to be in attendance. Uh, and his tryout is going down in Atlanta. Um, we have been saying for uh, some time now that uh, Colin Kaepernick needs to actually come out and speak on whether or not he actually wants to play. Yeah. He has finally made a statement saying that he wants to play. So now we've heard from him as opposed to hearing the people around him or maybe mm -hmm. Nessa or mm -hmm. just, you know, random people around around the NFL. Uh, so he will be uh, auditioning. Yeah. Um, I know that the Giants and the Jets are both interested in uh, Kaepernick because they're two of the teams that have uh, placed their names on the list mm -hmm. that will come uh, come down to, to see him. Right. Um, and I'll start on this side. What Sarah. team do you think that he has a chance of going to out of all those? <sighs> Okay, let me just say first, I, I hope that this is actually not just some BS just to say, all right, yo, we gave him a chance and uh, nobody wanted him. Right. I um, hope it's, yeah. You know, but, I mean, there's a lot of teams that could use him realistically. and I mean, probably half the team in the league could use him. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing the Jets uh, sign him. Yeah, the Jets need another quarterback. They need yeah. something. They Sam need Donald some is, is not doing, uh, really doing not that it. well. <laughs> um, so maybe, you know, Kaepernick coming in could help in that situation. Uh, a couple, a couple of teams maybe that I, that could could use Kaepernick right now. I mean, the Dolphins, mm -hmm. they could definitely mm -hmm. use a quarterback. Yeah, I wouldn't say the Giants just because uh, Dan, uh, Dave Jones has had like a, a pretty good season, so I wouldn't I wouldn't say bring him in in that situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe even even Dallas just because. You know, if they can't pay uh, Dak Prescott that forty million, you know, get Kaepernick in there. Yeah. 
Now, so. it's interesting because so many people, uh, you know, weren't jumping for joy when Jay-Z did the deal with the partnership with NFL, right? Right. But do you guys think that he definitely had a hand in all of a sudden Cap getting this workout? Like, do you think that he advocated for him? Or, or where do you think this is coming from? Because out of all times, after that deal, I'm just kind of yeah. questioning that. I think he had some say in it because it's been three years since he's been out the league. Yeah. And then all of a sudden when Jay-Z joined the partnership, mm -hmm. um, Kaepernick gets a private workout for the NFL. Mm -hmm. So something has to be up. You know, I think that Jay-Z definitely had a say in it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. what do you guys think? I mean, the, the, you know, they, they, they've been talking about Jay-Z uh, having a little part in the Kaepernick tryout situation. I'm, I'm gonna wait and see, get a little bit more information to see if that's actually the case and what role he actually played in it. Um, mm -hmm. If I mean, if that is accurate though, it, it would be funny, you know, because of the backlash that he took when he signed the the, the deal with the NFL, you know, yeah. and before anything had actually been done. Yeah. Uh, you know, Eric Reed uh, was coming out and saying stuff. Nessa was saying stuff. A couple of people were talking about, uh, you know, about Jay Z. So if he actually did have a hand mm -hmm. in uh, making this tryout happen, you know. You know, a lot of people gonna have to eat those words and apologize. And even us here on the show, when it happened, we were kind of, at first, or I speak for myself, I was kind of shocked. But then I was like, you know what, Jay Z has—he's a mastermind, <laughs> right. and yeah. he really is for the community. I don't know how people were thinking that this was all business. Look at his—you know—his repetition precedes him. Look at all the things right. he's done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I am happy, and I—I I, I do think that he has something to do with it, 100 percent, because he got a lot of heat for not. You know, backing him or not, you know, go ahead and say something for Cap, and then this happens. So I definitely think he has something to do with it. For sure. So yeah, that's awesome. great. Definitely. <laughs> so I hope, you know, I hope we see him back in the league. You know, we've been supporting uh, Kaepernick since mm -hmm. day one, and it'll be great to see him back in the league. You know, you know, it's not like he was he was horrible when he was in. He was he was a middle, you know, average quarterback, but mm -hmm. he had been to a Super Bowl before, and you know, the Forty ers team. They uh they started to deplete the roster after that Super Bowl run, so you can't just put the you know the, the team losing on Kaepernick's uh, shoulders, um, you know. But we gotta wait and see this Saturday. We will keep you guys uh, posted and uh, let you know what's going on that when we get back next Thursday. But uh, we got a whole lot to talk about. Big Gene is in the building. We ain't even gonna waste no more time. We about to just <laughs> just get right to it. Uh, let me just give y'all a little bit of back. I know most of y'all know already, you know. But, uh, you know, just for anybody that y'all might be tuning in for the first time, y'all don't know no better. Uh, I don't you know, know rock, Big Gene <laughs> uh, worked for Bad Boy Security uh, for, for a long time. And uh, he was there the night that the greatest to ever do it uh, was murdered and uh, out in uh, California. Um, so, you know, myself and uh, Big Gene, we put out a documentary called Raw Deal, The Last Big Night. It went crazy all over YouTube, went viral, 50 Cent uh, posted on his Instagram. Pretty much every blog site, website uh, picked it up, was talking about it. And, um, you know, he finally got the story out. You know, and it was something that had been on his heart uh, for a long time, and he was finally able to uh, get the story out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it did great things, and since then, He's uh he's become somewhat of a of a of a YouTube celebrity. You know, he got a crazy following right now on uh, on social media. Like people, thousands of people tune in uh, to his YouTube channel and uh, his show, Cooking in Conversations. You know, because somebody that's been in the industry so long, they got a lot of stories. They know a lot of people. You know, and outside of uh, you know just being uh, Puff Security and. <laughs> Bad Boy Security, you know, he saved a lot of people, a lot of your favorite people's uh, lives. He's uh, he saved, you know, yeah. so he got a lot to talk about. So we just going, we going, I'm going to show y'all a little clip from uh, the last episode of uh, Cooking and Conversations. And uh, when we come back, ben G Big G going to be out here and we're going to just rock out for the rest of the show. <laughs> Might even get some overtime in too. Ooh. OT. He wrote a letter. I'm not going to tell you the people who, who you wrote the letter to, but people who listen to me that's close, I'm going to say his name is Baldy. Everybody know who I'm talking about, who was around in Harlem at that time. We're going to call him Baldy. He wrote a letter because he let my brother, my god brother, see the letter, and my god brother let me read it also. You know what I'm saying? And before Al even told on anybody to the degree where he got on the stand, he 
he in that letter he told him that he was not going to talk or tell on anybody in the New York from New York. They made it clear to him that they wanted those DC dudes and that he was not going to tell on any. I'm reading the letter myself that he wasn't going to tell on anybody. Don't you know if I would have had to tell on anybody from New York, New York would have been really dry for a long time. So he wrote a letter explaining this to one of the dudes that he admired in Harlem and saying that he wasn't going to tell on nobody. He made the deal that he wasn't going to tell on nobody from Harlem. Nobody from New York. Now I know I'm going to catch flack about that. Mr. Levy, what you talking Test about? Test one, two. One, two. What up, dog team? M-B-Z-E? Zacharitz? All right, welcome back. Oh man, Big Gene in the building, yo. What's going on? What's up, Flavor? How you doing? Man, How you doing, young lady? Glad to have right. you back. The okay. goat in the building. <laughs> the goat. Oh my god. Yo, that's what they saying over the internet right now. You the big homie. You unk now. That's it. You got unk status. Once you get unk status, you can retire. That's it. You don't got to do nothing else. Okay. All right. That's what the young cats is calling you, man. Well, I'm good at retiring, so you know what I'm <laughs> got no problem with that. That's a that's a that's a fact, and yeah. uh, we gonna, I'm gonna we really quick. I just want to shout out. Uh, let me shout out my bro uh, M Rec really quick because he definitely helped us um, push uh, Raw Deal the last big night out there. So I got to right. salute uh, M Rec. Mm -hmm. Always. Um, and then that clip on the show, you were actually talking about uh, Alpo, uh, the letter that he had wrote about uh, I guess not sentient, and that's from. The, I guess that's when the, the part in the movie with Cameron when he was getting locked up and he was saying, I ain't No, gonna... I, I had nothing to do with that. Oh, so he was just, just something else so that he wasn't. That, that, he, that was something prior to that whole incident. That was something after that whole incident. You know, that thing with him and Rich in the movie and stuff like that uh, could have been considered like fictitious. What I was talking about was true life, real stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What he had did. You know, when he had got caught in D.C., Okay, not okay, because yeah, in the movie you know, that was from New York when he got arrested. That was a New York situation when he had caught got caught in D.C. and uh, the feds. He made a deal with the feds. He made the deal that he wouldn't have to give up any information from anybody from New York, and he wrote somebody from New York a letter explaining that. Wow. And I was so happened on the block at the time, and they brought the letter, and I was one of the persons who read the letter. Now is okay because all right. So we got this big thing going on right now. Right. You know because <laughs> uh, you know Takashi just messed up the game for everybody. Um, you know how you do that? <laughs> with his, well, because we the, the the I guess the whole ideal of snitching and and what's a what's a snitch? Right. What's an informant? What's like what's a rat? You know, and 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 is it condoned? Well, I don't know. What you mean by is it condoned? Well, because because I feel like every individual has his own choice mm -hmm. and they make their own choice how they want to live their life. You know what I'm saying? If you a snitch, that's an individual who tells a story to law enforcement about somebody else that he knows nothing about just to get himself out of trouble. Yeah. If you are a rat, you are an individual who has eaten off the same plates and dealt with the same people. And y'all was in an enterprise together right. and you turn state evidence or federal evidence against them. That makes you a rat. So, you, so if you are, will be in the rat category. That's the rat category. Okay. So if you're a confidential informant, mm -hmm. you getting paid, man. You're just doing, that's a job. You, now you got a job. You're then. working. You yeah. got a job. Yeah. Oh, so they not don't even count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying. <laughs> right. You're getting a paycheck. You know what I'm saying? But don't be, don't, don't be fooled, man. 
it's a lot of individuals that backdoor snitch. And me being in law enforcement for 27 years, I had an opportunity to read some confidential files or, or you see that and you know that and you know people in those business. And you see a lot of guys make deals. You got to understand, you can make a deal with the government and it never reached paper. Mm. You get it? So when somebody goes to the discovery, your name won't even be in there. Right. But how did they get that information? Right. You got to realize every officer starts his job behind his desk. Mm. If he gets information, somebody then told him. Right. Yeah. So now when you make a choice and you living in that lifestyle, if you living in that lifestyle and you determine that you either going to be a snitch or rat or whatever you may be, then you have to live with that choice. Right. You understand? That's just like if you come on my porch and you decide that you want to set up shop and sell weed or smoke or sell drugs on my porch, either I'm going to call the police or I'm going to handle it myself. Yeah. Now, with, with making the documentary and, you know, speaking of the stories and the things that happened in your life, did you receive any negative backlash for speaking on certain individuals and kind of revealing things that people didn't know? Did you receive a negative backlash from those things? Jesus received negative backlash. <laughs> That's a fact. What makes me different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I received a lot of it. You did. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't bother me. Okay. You understand? Yeah. When you stand on the truth, you understand? You ain't going to fall for nothing. Right. Yeah. I think when I watch the documentary and just speaking the trip about, like, just the legacy of everything that you've done, there is a certain selflessness that your job entails. And my perspective of it is you're telling your story. So people can't really get mad of this is your life, that you were a part of it. So you really can't get mad from someone who put their life in the line for others and they're revealing to everyone, like, this is how it happened and this is my truth. So it's, but why not? it's definitely... Why not what? Why can't they get mad? That's easy. Yeah. See, it's easy to get mad and be upset with somebody because a lot of times you don't want to face the truth and you don't want right. to hear that. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's easier to tell somebody. We would will, we will rather hear the lie than we would, do, we would the truth. Right. You understand? Yeah. And that, that's what this country and everything is built on. Yeah. It's built on a lie. Mm -hmm. You understand? You grew up thinking that... Uh, George Washington chopped down the cherry tree. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That was one of the fables that they told. Right. Never happened. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's easy to live and build a lie. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People don't want to face the truth. Of course, yeah. Now, and that's oh, what I've been dealing with. You, you've been going back and forth. Uh, Why well, didn't say you've been going back and forth? But you, you, you uh, said some things in regards to uh, Reggie Ray uh, Jr., who was over uh, death row security. Right. Um, and then he came back and he said some things about you. He he kind of in the in the sense of of that whole realm of telling and all of that. Um, what's the is there even a relationship with you and Reggie? Right? Like, do you do you, have you spoken to him personally since y'all been had the back and forth? No, no. What happened was, and uh, I'm gonna take partly blame for that whole thing. I told Reggie how I felt from him. From Jump Street, a man, a dude named Rail from 313 got us on the phone together. Mm -hmm. At first, I had no interest in it. Rail thought we could do some things together. You understand? So he got us on the phone. I told Reggie how I felt about him from Jump Street. You understand? Mm -hmm. And uh, I told him I didn't like the fact. I said, I know for a fact. Mm -hmm. You understand? Me being a trained investigator, me being an individual that was in the business, that that dude, Kaden, didn't come into this and know the stuff that he know without getting it from you, Reggie. Uh -huh. You understand? Without getting it from you. We had that discussion the whole nine yards. I told him I couldn't go on the show. I wouldn't go on the show. But then when he was going to jail, I told him, I found he was going to jail. He told me he was going to jail. He had to go away. I said, listen here, I'll do him a solid. i come on the show for him. Uh, you referring to the, is that the Gangster Chronicles podcast? It wasn't the Gangster Chronicles. It was... Uh, I think bomb first or something like that. Okay. So, so I, w I went on bomb first with a form. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So we had that conversation mm -hmm. and everything like that. So in the interim of me explaining how Kaden got his information, mm -hmm. I got somewhat zealous and I said, yeah, he got it from Reggie. Reggie, you know, told him and he wouldn't, you know, we went through that whole thing. And then I guess he got into his feelings behind it. 
no. and he didn't let the people know that. Yeah, Gene said that, you know, but I thought we was gonna hold that, you know, he hold that to himself or whatever like that. Yeah, because we had that conversation. Before. But y'all did, have, but you actually had that conversation with him, so it's not something. Oh, I had that just, conversation with him prior. Prior, to that. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so as we're well to, on the phone. Yeah, so as opposed to just you going out and just saying that you came spoke to him at man to man. Oh, and no doubt. Told him, okay. Not even, it ain't no doubt about it. Yeah, no, because if I, you don't like it, he didn't speak on it then. Yeah, he didn't speak on it then. He ain't coming. Oh, Gene, you know, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. playing around the bushes stuff. So, yeah. go ahead. That's the way he wanted to handle it. But then he handled it a whole different home. way. Yeah, you understand. We're Once his about. other friends them got to it, so you know, he put out the whole thing with Takashi and stuff like that. I Man, listen here. I was a state parole officer. I had to snitch on somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to write a report <laughs> on some. Everybody wasn't good, yeah. man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't save everybody, yeah. so I had to write a report on everybody. So if that's what he want to call that, man, yeah. listen, let him go. Wait, with but that's it. a little bit different because that's actually your job. But, bro, listen to me. What he eat don't make me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you. So I didn't realize the, the family ties we have here. So my um, uncle is Bill Whitfield, and I spoke to him before the show. For, Bill is your, your, your uncle? Yes, yeah, my mom's brother. Oh, my and God. So, you know that's my man. I didn't know. That's and my so dude. I tried, I tried to viewers, tell her, though, Jen. I tried huh? to tell her. She, huh? she yes. wanted the whole rundown on me. <laughs> I didn't know until the I, car. How you know him? Where you know him? I'm like, I didn't know. Because <laughs> yeah. he lives in Vegas. But for the viewers, um, just to give you guys a recap. So my uncle, Bill, um, he basically was a bodyguard his entire life. Um, he basically uh, worked for uh, Michael Jackson. He was a bodyguard for a lot of people at Bad Boy. And so you guys go way back. What are you, what are you waiting for? See, if you really know your uncle. I don't know all of them. I don't know your all of them. Your uncle worked for Don King. Your uncle helped Miss Wallace down. He was Andre Harrell's bodyguard. You know, Andre Harrell's bodyguard first. Yes, I knew that. Yeah. He was Miss Wallace's bodyguard. Yeah. He the one contacted me for Miss Wallace because Puff said he didn't know a Gene deal, and Bill overheard the conversation. Mm -hmm. He said, "Yo, that's my frat brother." Yeah. So he the one con he connected me with Miss Wallace. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He held down like Martin Martin Lawrence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Your, your uncle was real popular. He's going to be mad at me. Like, girl, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your, your, your I'm sorry, uncle. Listen, that's, that's my dude. He knows your, your credentials. Yeah, no, no doubt. Yeah, I didn't he know. He wrote a book and he got a movie out on it. Yes, him. yes. Guarding Neverland. Yes. Um, so, guys, definitely check out the book. Uh, remembering <laughs> the times. Guarding Michael Jackson, for sure. Right. Yeah, no, he he's told me about a lot of experiences um, with his line of work and with Michael. And when I when I brought you up, he was like, "That's my frat brother. That's fam. That's bro." Like, when you yeah. interviewing him, I'm like, in an hour. He's like, "What?" Yeah, that's my dude. Bill is my dude. I got his number in my phone right that's now. That's awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. See, I'm, talking, I'm trying to tell you, and what's going on? He out did, here. but I was and like, "What?" Because you know, my uncle lives in Vegas me. now. And I just seen him. He just came and saw me when I was wow, in Vegas. Wow, that's crazy. Every time I'm in Vegas, he come and see me. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw him this over the summer. Wow, that's, yeah. that's crazy. So you guys have worked side by side before? Yeah, we uh, bodyguard Martin Lawrence. We used to work together, you know, do stuff with Bad Boy. Like I told you, he had Miss Wallace. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He had Andre Harrell. Yeah. So we used to also do, you know, the club scene together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he is a security. I mean, you know, you've seen him. He, he um, has a security business in Vegas now, so right. he's doing his thing. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, man, what's going on out here? It's a small yeah. world. You yeah. know, and, uh, and, and Gene, you, you've been working on uh, putting this book together. Oh, my God, man, yeah. it's it, It's been a difficult time because, you know, um, when you go back and you started replaying your life, you know, first as a kid, you know, that's real, you know, I met my mother when I was 12. I met my father when I was 16. Wow. So, you know, do the trials and tribulations I went through as a child, you know, and I, you know, became a man. It's going through that journey of life. And sometimes you say to yourself, damn, how did I make it? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's only through the grace. Yeah. Um, can you, do, we, do we have a, a release date yet or what's going on? Well, we was trying to get to uh, Thanksgiving, to Thanksgiving, you know, actually to have it done so we can bring it up. But, you know, like when you dealing with people and like when I was with Simon and Schuster and they was trying to do it, you know, it went quick, fast in a hurry. And then uh, one day I walk in and she don't want to write the book no more. That was yeah. Karen Hunter. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And. 
you know, uh, my friend Shay, she could tell you the book we got right there is about 200 some pages, but all of a sudden you don't want to finish the book. What, mm -hmm. what, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? So I finds out why. Some outside, some outside influence. Yeah, some very outside <laughs> influence. You know what I'm saying? After they gave me a contract for 75000 who does that? You know, they got the money to do it. Yeah. yeah. You understand? So nobody gives nobody 25000 up front and then say to them, oh, we decide we don't want to write your book right now. It's not interesting. So my book is not interesting. I've been on YouTube in less than nine Less a year. This yeah, made a year. A year. Uh, November the ninth made a year, and myself, I have over eleven million views. You know, on my channel. Yeah. Myself, not saying what I have on Wisdom Clear, not saying what I have on MREC TV. Yeah. And other people who have stolen stolen things on my channel alone, I have over eleven million views. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, hmm, mm -hmm. it's not interesting. Yeah. yeah. You know, I sit there and tell a story and. People be captivated, you know what I'm saying, about the story. When I, I did the biblical betrayal of Biggie Smalls, a grown man told me, yo, I was crying. Wow. He said, I was crying. That's so let, let's get into that for, for our viewers that don't know your story. Um, what made you get into uh, the line of work that you were in? From the very beginning of bodyguard work and just law enforcement, what motivated you young to start? Well, I don't think like like any other job or any kind of situation you get into, sometimes you know the atmosphere, the time and the place plays a position. Yeah. You know, I used to always beat up bullies. Mm. You know, I people who used to growing up and they would tell you if I see somebody picking on somebody, you know, because I was trained in boxing, trained in karate, yeah. you know what I'm saying, at an early age and stuff like that, I'd be like, yo, I bet you can't do me like that. Yeah. I bet you won't do me like that. Yeah. Why don't you pick on somebody that's going to fight you back? Uh, you understand? Always have that protective, like, you know, instinct, so, somewhat yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, it went on through college and everything like that. And I think uh, when I became a part of uh, this click called The Same Game, uh, I took on that role too. Mm -hmm. You know, we was giving parties, so I was doing the security and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And then, like, uh, I could, you know, cultivate a good security team. So we got real big in the city, mm -hmm. our security team. We used to call it Slick in the Family. And when our security team got big, mm -hmm. everybody wanted us to do the front door. Because in New York, you got you to re remember, mm -hmm. when you give a party, everybody's important. Nobody want to wait online. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you had to have a security team that, Regulate. Could, could regulate that, mm -hmm. and my team did it. Okay. And who are some stars that you really put your life on the line or that you just had a crazy situation protecting? Well, I think that if you come to an event and I'm responsible for the security, yeah. that I don't have to per se be bodyguarding you. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for you going home safely. Got it. Yeah. So at this one particular time, uh, Christopher Williams <laughs> had a, 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 a young star growing up, mm -hmm. coming up in the ranks, Holly Barry, at Heavy D's birthday party mm -hmm. by the throat Wow. with a, a gun in his hand. That's crazy. And I don't know if she even knew he had the gun in her hand, but me and another individual snatched him up and got him out the club. And I was like, yo, bro, um... What's the problem? Wow. <laughs> and uh, he, um, yo, man, she just be having me bugging. And then I said, yo, man, you got to call her tonight. Yeah. And he walked down the street and stopped. And he said, yo, can I get my gun back? <laughs> <laughs> and I took the bullets out, gave him his gun. He walked down the street. And I went back to the party and everything like that. When I got back in the party, about an hour or so later, he in the party with her. Wow. Hugged up and dead. <laughs> That's crazy. I was like, so Tripp and I, we, we had a little situation at Holly very few uh, a few months ago. So she's actually been like became a good friend yeah. um, on the red carpet. Yeah. So that's that's crazy. Out of all people. So hey, listen, G might, might yeah. be part of the reason that happened. That's why. That, that night went a different way. Go you ahead. Know, might not have got you know got yeah. to that uh that uh that's moment insane. on the red carpet. Yeah. Wow. 
Oh man, I'm gonna have to talk to my girl about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she probably didn't, you know, she, she, yeah. she's a big star. She probably didn't remember it or know it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Yeah, but that was at Heavy D's birthday party at the California Club on 44th Street. I still remember. Wow. Yeah. And you you also uh, did security uh, for, for a, a legend that, that we lost uh, not too long ago, uh, Chaz Williams. Oh, yes. Chaz. Um, just, like, I guess just... I, guess. I was over Chaz Security, Black Hands. Yeah. You know, Chaz was an individual that was, like, everybody tried to remember him as being a gangster because he allegedly robbed 160 banks yeah. while he was going Couldn't to college BET, um, in prison. Gangster. You know what I'm saying? He was on BET, mm -hmm. you know, American Gangster. Yeah. But uh, he also fought BET in a lawsuit because they was trying to do trade infringement rights on him and he beat them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He was a very intelligent individual. I mean, like he had uh, two bachelor's and a master's degree. Mm -hmm. mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, he was just a phenomenal person. He started working with uh, the, the people in uh, the councilmen in Queens against the gang violence and stuff like that. And at one time, they had it under control where, the, you know, the gang members wasn't, you know, banging no more mm -hmm. just on the influence Chaz had on the streets. Right, right. You know and what I'm saying? When you were, when you were with uh, Chaz, a lot of the time was during the whole back and forth between 50 and Ja Rule, where kind of, kind of at the start of that whole situation. Yeah, I was with him through that whole thing. All right, so now, and you said, so you told me before, you didn't realize that they even had a beef uh, the way they, the way that they did until things got heated in Vegas. That's when I, I really didn't, I didn't understand it or I, I wasn't even looking at it like that because we used to always be around each other. Chaz used to be around Irv Gotti and them yeah. and Supreme and the whole nine yards. So I didn't even think it was a beef like that. I just think there was just two little, two rappers that didn't like each other. Mm -hmm. And, and they was from the same area. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ja, because he was on, was more cocky and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And 50, who was living the life that he was talking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or had lived the life he was talking, yeah. was anxious to show everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I never thought about the, the, the beef or anything until I was out in Vegas. And it was a situation where as that, you know... Um, I gave, I let uh, 50 babysit Nina for a minute mm -hmm. and Supreme came out the car and they was mean mugging each other. And Chaz, uh, I asked him, was they going up to the party where the party was? And they say, no, nah, we're going to go to this other party. And they jumped back in the limousine. You understand? Mm -hmm. And it was strange to me. So I questioned Chaz. I said, you're Chaz. Man, I asked uh, Premium, was they going to the movie, coming up to the party? Mm -hmm. He was like, nah, just tell old dude that uh, I'm going to holler at him later and everything like that. But, bruh, the tension between ja I mean, between Supreme and 50 was crazy, dog. You know what I'm saying? It's like Preem was looking through me dead at 50, and 50 was looking through me dead at Preem. Mm -hmm. And it was like they was about ready to, you know, get it on. And I said, I didn't understand that, man. But then I know that 50 was all right. He said, what you mean 50 was all right? Yeah, because I gave him Nina the babysitter. He said, you did what? <laughs> you said, you gave him what? Yeah. I said, he said, yeah, mom. He said, yo, get that from him. <laughs> yeah, for y'all folks that don't know uh, who, <laughs> right. who Nina is, y'all got to watch the documentary. <laughs> and we can get the breakdown on, yeah. on, on that, okay? Yeah. So another legend that you were um, with when they unfortunately were murdered was the Notorious B.I.G. So can you tell our viewers a little bit about that night or things that you recall or just how that impacted you? Well, I, I would go I would go as far as this, you know, listen, or we've talked about that on a lot of different platforms and everything yeah. like that. But um, when you are, I, I, I've, I've been through a series of murders. I was there at City College when eight kids lost their life. Oh. I the one who opened the door for them, and they fell dead on the floor. Oh. Eight of them died right there. One died at the hospital. 
I was uh, at a club at um, on Columbus Avenue when another individual, up and coming rapper or whatever like that from the Bronx, got shot dead in the head wow. right there on the floor at the uh, Sweetwaters. Mm. I think that's the name of the club or the Sweetwater. And they were doing security at, that night. And the individual came and told me, said, yo, somebody about to get killed in here, Gene. And so I said, yo, nobody got, came through the door with no guns. He said, they came through the back kitchen. And when I, as soon as I turned on the light, the light came on, you see a dude, some go, pow. And the dude smoked in the air. The dude hit the ground, blood over there. So outside of that and just, you know, just normal shootings at the club. Yeah. You take it in as that's a way of life, mm. but you don't know that you in trauma. And I didn't know that until I was faced with uh, a guy them had five, three guys had five guns to my head and was beating me mm. with guns. So you don't know you you going through trauma. You yeah. you, you experience trauma until you're out of it. Mm -hmm. So. I would I would just have to say that the effect that it had had on me is that it's hard. You know, it's hard to explain it, but you try to use friends, family, people to get through the the feeling that you have to make a new day, yeah, another cope. day mm -hmm. to cope. Yeah. You you try to find something to help you with your coping skills. Yeah. And then, you know, you just got to man up. Yeah. It, it's so interesting you bring that up because the last couple of shows you've been speaking about mental health. And so all of these things that you've witnessed, do you, have you kind of ever thought about seeking any like professional, like therapist or anything like that to kind of cope with the things that you've seen? Because it could be traumatic. Well, um... I think that your faith mm -hmm. and that this is not good for everybody. Mm -hmm. But we all have a prescription inside us. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to open yourself up and medicate yourself with your knowledge, your spirit, mm -hmm. and what you've learned over the years. Right. So I'm able to Look inside me. And if I had to go in my basement or somewhere and meditate, cry, Decompress, yeah. and pray, mm -hmm. and my mom tell me read Psalms 91, you understand? Yeah. <laughs> and and, and um, you know, the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you need to do mm -hmm. to understand that this too shall pass. Right. Some people can't do that. You understand? But I use my spirit, my soul, and my knowledge for my self-medication. Mm. Now, all right, I want I, I want to go back a little bit uh, to the funeral. Because on, on one of your recent shows, uh, you were explaining to your audience uh, something in regards to uh, them not actually paying for Big's funeral as far as... Uh, no, what happened was is that I think you know, they use the big's budget. But what happens is that when people get a whiff of things, mm -hmm. you understand? And big pay for his own funeral. You understand? Out of his own budget in the whole nine yards. Yeah. Now, somebody may have went back and said, oh, okay, he did that. Here go the money for that. Mm -hmm. You understand? But initially he paid for his own funeral. Mm. And you, now, but you, now you said you had the receipts on that. You said you... They yeah, I said that. I said the person, the person had the, you know, he had the, he had the booking. He yeah. got all the books. The fans had took all the books from Kirk Burroughs, mm -hmm. and they just released it to him. And Kirk Burroughs is the former he was, uh, he was president. The, he was the president of Bad Boy during Boys. that time. Wow. All right, so they get so so. Oh man, that's crazy. Oh man, you got to understand is that listen here, man. Does anything shock you at this point? In no, it don't shock because because you got to understand this. Tupac sold how many? Ten million um, or more? Which album? Oh, this last album before he died. 
I, I don't think it was. I don't think it was ten million. It might it might have been. I gotta look. I'm, I'm gonna look it up and uh, and see how much is last. So up. okay, but big so before. ten million. Yeah, right? big, big went diamond on, on like went diamond. Mm -hmm. All right. A big went diamond. How does his mother and him only get what seven point five million dollars? Well, because didn't Puff own all of the uh, the publishing and uh, so what about the points? Well, maybe he didn't know about the about the points at that point. Because I mean, at that time, I mean, still now people don't know about points and and, and all that. First of all, could you actually explain, explain how points work? Because for the people at home that may not know what points are, well, points is just like you have in real estate. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. If you get people in your houses to pay your rent on time, you understand. Mm -hmm. At the end of the year, if you got a thousand. Somebody paying a thousand dollars a month, mm -hmm. and you only pay ten thousand dollars for the house, mm -hmm. or just stuff like that. You yeah. only pay ten thousand dollars. At the end of the year, you got twelve thousand right. dollars. You understand? And even though you just paid ten thousand dollars for that house, mm -hmm. you understand? You're gonna get twelve thousand dollars for the rest of your life, rest of, as long as you own that that thing. So points is worth money. Right. So if you have, like, just say if you have two. Two points, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, to your album or whatever like that. You know, that's, and you sell a million, mm -hmm. You that, that two points might be worth, what, $200,000? Right? Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, well, I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. Maybe he didn't, he didn't even realize that because, again, like. He never signed his contract, brother. His contract went back to bad boy. They sweep that up on the rug. I was with Big the day before when he was reviewing his contract. Mm -hmm. And we were shooting uh, Hypnotize. You understand? Yeah. He was killed at the Vibe party. So he didn't get, he didn't get a chance to give it back to his lawyer, sign it, and have his lawyer review it. So what do you think they're going to do? Yeah. They're going to snatch that back up? Yeah, put what he they did. Re Revamp the contract? And what? Change the points on it. <coughs> Wow. Oh my goodness. That's the tag. James getting crazy and crazier, man, with the stuff that's been, been going on. Because they down. got the information. They got they got he got you know the paperwork is, is there. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? You can see the different contracts. Now has he has he has he put this out for the public to see yet? No, he hasn't. But you know what? It's it's like this, man. When you if you tell somebody and they and he did tell somebody mm -hmm. and that was the reason why he was ostracized and fired from bad boy okay because you know some people you could be giving them good information they playing both sides to the middle yeah and he got caught up in the in that trying to do the right thing wait who are you talking about right now Kirk uh, Burrow. Kirk Burrow. okay trying to do the right thing he got caught up in the wrong he got caught up in the situation mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying that's just like I didn't have to tell Big Mother nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could have stayed mute, stayed quiet. You understand? Yeah. And not tell her nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. Puffet already told her he didn't know me. He told her that? Told her personally that he didn't know no Gene deal. I knew Puff before was it even a bad boy. Why did he do that? Because... I guess the the police officers who interviewed me told her to ask Gene Deal because mm. they found me to be credible. Oh wow! Right? Nah. No, you do. You, I think do you realize that you kind of sparked a whole wave of a lot of uh, you know just figures from the past coming and telling their stories and whatnot. Uh, on uh, on throughout YouTube and the internet, a lot of these guys. Uh, I don't think they would give me credit for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? God, I'm a snitch. Well, <laughs> I'm a cop. <laughs> you know what I'm but, I mean, but you kind of you kind of did set the trend, and now we're seeing a lot of these cats uh, doing interviews. But uh, the, the one one thing, because I know that you actually knew, uh, you know, and I want to go back to Alpo just for a second, personally. What, what was your thoughts on because uh, recently he went went back to the spot where everything went down uh, between him and uh, and uh, Rich Porter? What was your thoughts on that? 
My thoughts was the same thoughts of Sammy the Bull, uh, the the mob hit dude elite. You got all these guys that are gangsters who are coming out telling their story and their life. That's their story and that's their life. Yeah. I don't have no personal feeling against it. Yeah. You understand? You know, a lot of times we personalize things that don't have nothing to do with us. Yeah. That has nothing to do with me. Mm. You say I have no per I knew Rich, I knew Al. I used to see him. Mm -hmm. We used to be on 144th sometime playing basketball back in the schoolyard mm -hmm. at Drew Hamilton. You understand? We used to be right there on 144th and 8th, you know, uh, shooting dice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? CeeLo. You know what I'm saying? They would, they would be shooting. I'd be side betting or whatever like that. But you know what I'm saying? I don't have no personal feelings. That's they, I, I, I wasn't engaged with them. Yeah. You understand? Like that. So you're, you're working on your book. Do you want to tell our viewers the other things that you have going on with the YouTube channel and just other things that you're working on? Uh, I think I had to take a time and just put my life in order. Yeah. And what I mean is that, like, for the last 27 years, I was responsible for, for anywhere from 67 to 120 convicted felons in New York State. Wow. And I took that real personal. You know, I was out there trying to help the brothers and help them change their life and see something different. Yeah. You know, some guys didn't want to change mm -hmm. and they use jail as a cop out because mm -hmm. I ain't got to pay rent. I ain't got to take care of my kids. I'm locked up. Wow. You understand? I never thought about it like that. You understand? Mm -hmm. you, you see a lot of guys go back to jail during Christmas time. Because they don't want to be responsible for... That's, <laughs> Yo, that's low and low. Oh, Yo, my goodness. It's the truth. Dang, that is crazy. That's, that's crazy. It's the truth. Like, I don't want to believe that. But, like, like I believe you. Okay. Yeah, like, crazy. you know what I mean? That's, 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 that's crazy. It's, it's the truth. Wow. That's crazy. All right, Jim, we got, we got about three, uh, three minutes left on the live show. Can, right. you, can you give us... A never before told uh, story or uh, experience of you uh, doing security, whether it be funny, whatever, just or some you know somebody that 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 we all know and love. A never told story for doing security. <laughs> Something original. It's nasty. I mean, all right, nasty, well, we'll put the, we have to put the thing on YouTube and let them know that this. No, nah, no, nah, I can't tell you. You said never told. It's a, nah. Now go ahead. Come on, come on. We got we got two minutes left. Come on. Okay. You can edit it the way you want to. I'm a, I'm gonna edit it. <laughs> um, it was me. What's his name? Um, from. From uh, New Jack City, Payne, Alan Payne. Alan Payne, okay. It was um, the dude from the Cosby. Michael Jamal Warner? Michael Jamal Warner. Our whole crew. Theo? Yeah, Theo. <laughs> Theo. Do you, do you think Cosby did it? Huh? Do you, do you think Cosby did it? What I think is is that, that the uh, Me Too movement is only for... Uh, it, it has shown that it only goes out to black people. What do you mean? It's because all the guys that they ever, they, they went to jail or in trouble behind the Me Too movement are black. Oh, I see. All the rest yeah. of the guys, the men yeah. that was on the news, uh, uh, the uh, Harvey Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein yeah. all of them are like that, they still out fighting their case. Yeah, it would be like a scandal that's... The e news, yeah. and but then it's like okay, but right. these and look at Bill Cosby. People of color are going and to he jail. in jail. Bill Cosby in jail for cases, and he when they say you have the right to, you know, uh, uh, prosecution at at a uh, 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 considerable early time, or like the, your prosecutor, you have the right to prosecution. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying he all the crimes and all, and the stuff he got convicted stuff, it was it was past the statute of limitation. Yeah, it had to be. That's that's yeah. That's what I thought too. Has has passed statute of limitation. Yeah. That's crazy. But they changed the laws for him. 
All right, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to get, get, uh, we're gonna close out on the live show, but we're going to get Jay to stick around for a few more minutes and get some overtime footage that's going to be strictly on the YouTube, so that way he can feel free to, 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 nah, to man, say what he's going to say. We're going to really get, get to it. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, but uh, really quick for myself, Trip Young, Emma Marie, Big Jay, we appreciate you coming you so through again. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate you, man. And, of course, uh, Sierra, thank you guys in the back. We will see you guys next week. Type of blend, backing up misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursday. Pass. Top of the key, bullet. Keep your right side. Oh, it's a turnover, it's a turnover. Rock right stop on the run with it. One man to beat. Drops it off the smooth, smooth way up. Fuck it. Three good, no good. Outlet over the slot, no booger with the steel. Excuse me, dancing with it, the pass. Drops it off the red big play up. Fuck it. Uh huh. This is real fans, real talk. talk. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk. We the illest, of course. Real fans, real talk. What's going on? It's Legend of Two Games, repping for Real Fans, Real Talk. It's Taj Gibson Day out here in Fort Green. Taj, talk about the importance of bringing this type of event to the community of Fort Green. It's real important. These are my people. We've been here a long time. They raised me. From the far side all the way to my side, this is Fort Green. We stay together. Absolutely, man. You can see the community loves it. One last question. As a Knicks fan, I'm happy you're home. How does it feel to be playing at the Mecca? It feels great. It's a dream come true. I'm just happy to be in New York, happy to wear the orange and blue. My family's excited. It's a dream come true. Absolutely, man. Much success this year and another great event, man. We really appreciate you taking time to speak with us, man. Oh, thank you. Real fans, real talk. Taj Gibson. This is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Live from the can. Uh huh. This is Real Fans Real Talk. Real Fans Real Talk. We as real as you thought.